nerd family, welcome once again to the Poindexter Lounge. My name is Enosh, aka Enosh Fett, along with the lovely Tiptastic. And today we are talking about um, some kind of sad news, um, depending upon how you look at it. Uh, it's definitely uh, not good news uh, for uh, for a lot of people, but it's something that we wanted to talk about. But before we join into that, join into that, and before we jump into that. Uh, first of all, if this is your first time to the Poindexter Lounge, know this. The Poindexter Lounge is... A place for nerds. That's right. It's a place where you and me and my crew can get together and talk about the things that we love. Things like TV shows, games, movies, sci-fi, fantasy, superheroes, Star Wars. I'm always waiting for you to pull the Ace Ventura and be like... <sighs> And then go down the line of everything <sighs> that we cover. So much more. And if that is something that you guys uh, feel like you guys like to be a part of, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, we are on our way to 10,000 subscribers and we want you to be in on that, all right? So please join today. Also hit that notifications bell so that you know when we put out new videos because that is... All the time. That's right. And we have all kinds of other ways that we'll talk about later that you could become a part of this great, growing nerd community. Nerd! Nerd! But in the meantime, today we're talking about something that uh, even though it doesn't really affect us directly, um, I think it's a pretty big event that has happened here in the last couple days. And that is, of course, the news that Collider has basically shut down all of its, all of its, most of its daily sh operations and shows. I mean, there's still a channel. Uh, they're going to concentrate. You can take all of their, you know, subscribers. <laughs> there you go. They're going to concentrate on some other things uh, other than what they've been doing the last few years. Uh, but I just, I, I've watched a few videos now. I've seen what John Campia has talked about. If, if you're not familiar mm -hmm. with Collider, Collider has been a, a website that has covered uh, uh, movies and TV shows and things like that for, for quite a while now, kind of like magazine style, where, mm -hmm. you know, writing uh, articles and reports and stuff like that. Uh, and then uh, John Campia, years ago, uh, started a, a movie um uh, YouTube channel, I guess it was, as it were. And then uh, that moved to him uh, working with AMC Theaters. And AMC the they had AMC M Movie Talk. Yes. And that was uh, that was their channel. And I remember discovering AMC uh, back in about 2000, probably about the end of 2014, uh, or early 2015. Before The Force Awakens Before The out. Force Awakens came out. And um, I uh, I loved it. I loved it. It was a lot of the inspiration for some of the early things that we did here as far as mm -hmm. like talking about things. I mean, when we first started giving each other nicknames, you know, like because Enosh Fett was always my screen name on a bunch of different things. But, you know, they would always, you know, they had these different little handles when they started Jedi Council on there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and like with Christian Harloff and all of them, you know, they, you know, he was Darth Harloff and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So when we started like doing movie stuff and, and, reviews and stuff like that that's when i came up with grand tiff tarkin that's when she came up with grand tiff tarkin and uh and the boys came up with theirs and so it's just kind of stuck with us you know we weren't trying to copy them but it just was kind of something that stuck um but it's been something that i really enjoyed i mean i remember leading up to the force awakens i was watching jedi council constantly well, we we were we had a, an hour commute at the time, so we were able to put that on in the car. It was something that we looked forward to, and it was every Thursday, so we knew on our drive home that that's what we watched yep. as we were driving home. Yeah, or and that, to for whoever was driving. And that was the things we had. We had this hour long commute one way, and then it was an hour back. So on, our, the, on, on the way there, we'd watch old ones, and on the way back, we'd watch yeah. the brand new. We'd one. watch whatever because uh, they they had a daily show of movie talk. You know, and so we would watch the the or listen to the movie talk thing on the way down, or vice versa, whichever was out, and you know, and and, and listen to it. And there was always some great. I mean, it always was filled with great news. One of the things I liked about it was that it it wasn't just you know speculation. They had a time for speculation where they would talk amongst mm -hmm. themselves and stuff, and they oh, what's this going to be? What's that going to be? But it was you know. It was news. It was it was real things. It wasn't like this Mike Zero stuff, you know, that, it, that it's like, you know, I'm just going to yeah. throw anything against the wall and hope something sticks. It was, hey, this is what's come out. This is what's being talked about. What do you guys think about it? And uh, I always appreciated that. And, you know, I, I don't always agree with, with John Campia. I don't always agree. You've actually gotten angry at John Campia. I have a couple of times. Now, I do agree with him fully on uh, Man of Steel. Like, he, he takes a lot of flack for loving Man of Steel, but I love Man of Steel, and I think it's one of the greatest superhero movies ever made. Um, and, uh, you know, I haven't always agreed with Christian Harloff when it comes to Star Wars, uh, but I, a lot of things that I do, 
you know, uh, Mark Ellis was one of my favorite um, uh, people on there because uh, I always just liked his personality. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, John Schnepp, uh, I felt like he was, he represented the nerd culture uh, so well in everything that he did, hosting the Hero Show. And then he did the documentary uh, about uh, the Superman Lives movie. And I remember watching that. And it's just all those things. And unfortunately, he passed away, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And um, it just seemed, though, over the last couple of years, that magic seemed to start dying down, yeah. you know. Um, and it's unfortunate, you know, uh, John Campia left. Well, well, first of all, AMC sold it yeah. to Collider and Collider came in. And I remember when Collider came in, we thought, oh, what's this going to be? It's going to be different, you know, uh, but you know, well, because they started that we got, we finally found them and we were excited and we loved watching them. And then all of a sudden yeah. they went away and it was just like, okay, what we found, we loved it just went away and then Collider started and then they all kind of went there. So it was like, oh, okay, at least we have them there. Yeah, well, and I was concerned, but you know, Collider really stepped it up. Mm -hmm. They put they put a lot behind it. The yeah. The quality was there uh, and, uh, you know, it looked great. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a great cast of people yep. that, that brought you, you know, news and, and, and stories on a daily basis and you felt like it was legit it mm -hmm. was good it was it was my favorite place to get movie news for the longest time yeah. um, and it was fine for a long time and but then you could start to see how things were kind of changing like you, you it wasn't always on the surface but you could kind of see in from watching the shows how things would slightly change a little bit and um, and then John Campia got really busy doing other things. They had mm -hmm. him doing other projects and, and he would leave for a little while and come back. And I don't want to say that the whole thing hinged on John Campia because I think that it, it would have done fine even without John Campia being there. But... He was funny when he did his rants. Yeah, you know. Um, but I feel that that... I watched a video yesterday of John just briefly addressing this. And he said over and over again in that he wasn't throwing them under the bus or anything like that. But he just said, you know, that he tried to, t you know, when things started going down, because at one point they were doing like over 100,000 views a day. And when it got bad, it was only like 10 to 15,000 at the end here. Uh, and that he would have dinners with, with them and, you know, with, with the people in charge, with the leadership and just tell them, you know, look, these are things that I think you should do. Uh, these are things that you're doing that I think you probably should get away from and that they just didn't want to take that advice. And so that kept going down. So I don't want to say that the whole thing hinged on John Campia, but I will say this. I think John Campia has a pretty good knowledge of how to do something like that. I mean, he went off and started his own YouTube channel mm -hmm. and he's like running it out of his house, but his looks great. Like I wish I had some of the knowledge that that guy has because obviously he had a little bit of startup money to be able to put together his studio and stuff. And you I mean, wouldn't... he did stuff besides when he used to tape himself and with the, with the bookcase in the background. You know, and that's the thing. It's like, man, he started off just doing that. He went literally from Collider having all that studio equipment and everything in a set and everything to just be in, in a spare bedroom, man, mm -hmm. with a camera. And now he's built it up. He's got great graphics. And uh, I wish, you know, like, I need, I think I need to take a tutorial like that. Like, because I would love to build up our uh, our channel to look, you know, somewhat like that. You know, to have, I mean, he's got different camera angles. I was just watching his production the other day and I was just thinking, holy cow. I mean, because all of a sudden he's got, he's got different camera angles. He's got people in other, you can tell that it's another part of, you know, his house or whatever, or another part of the room that he's in. But it's made to look like, you know, it's a studio where he's got somebody, he's got other guests who are now on the show with him and, and helping him go through the stories and stuff. And I saw yesterday when he was talking about this, it would be the main camera angle. And then all of a sudden it would cut to this other camera angle that'd be just off at the side as he's looking at the main camera. And I noticed like the production value, I didn't, I noticed these things because even though we only have what we have here at our house uh, doing this stuff, uh, I've, you know, I've worked in, in a lot of production uh, stuff and I, I I, I can appreciate it because like he had a moving camera and I'm thinking to myself, like, does he have a camera guy? Does he have that rigged on something? Like, I'm thinking like, how is he doing this? Cause I know it's at his house. Cause he's like, this is at my house, you know, in this spare bedroom. And yet he's got a good production going on and he's, he's simulcasting other people in and, you know, with, uh, 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 Burnett and stuff. And so I just, I see that John knows what he's doing. And I, and I know that he's like built up his channel pretty well since, leaving that. And so I just wonder if maybe 
you know, a lot of that was because of the the misdirection of uh, of where they went with it uh, afterwards. And I know there's a lot of people who have a lot of opinions about about what Collider did and about you know some of the things that. And I've I've heard I've heard uh, people like uh, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers who hates everything anyways. Uh, you know that you know he talks he talks about he, I saw a video where he talked about you know like he wasn't happy that anybody would be losing their job or anything like that but that you know this is all because you know if they're trying to be inclusive of everybody and have, it's like come on you know I, I don't I, I don't I didn't see a lot of that I just saw that you know they they had differing opinions on 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 their shows but you know I I think really where it started where I started to realize that I didn't think that it was going to be around much longer was when Christian Harloff left. Because you can like Christian or not, but the reality is 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 Christian has become a a very important part to part of the Star Wars community, you know, and the movie reporting community. Uh him and John Campion. Now it's it's ironic because him and John Campion are working together and they do a Star Wars show, you know, on John Campion's channel. And so uh called Light Side Dark Side. And so you know, all those things are, are super cool. You know, he's got the schmoes, no thing. And I was never into all that stuff. So I'm not even like some big fan of all that stuff. It just is what it is. Uh, but I look at it in the way that, that like when I saw him leave, he was like the personality. You got to have the personality, mm -hmm. right? You got to have that main person. John Campia was that person where, and, and Christian Harloff was like the second guy in that. Yeah. Right, and you had this great one-two punch, man. If John Campia wasn't on, you had Christian Harloff, and the other people were great. The other people were great, and 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 I think that even um, John Schnepp be kind of came a little mm -hmm. bit of that. But um, you know, you had that one-two punch of Campia and uh, and Harloff, and then when Harloff was gone, it just wasn't the same. T watching, trying to watch Jedi Council. Just wasn't the same, um, and there's a lot of great people on Jedi Council. So I don't even want to say that you know that like it wasn't like they were bad. It was just that it seemed like the sidekicks had took over the shows, yeah. and I didn't feel that they had the personalities to run those shows, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And so apparently I wasn't the only one who felt that way because then it became it literally went from being like Jedi council was like, and for a while movie talk was like something like it was a must see like every day when I was in my car driving around because I had a sales job at the time and I would put that on and I would listen to movie talk every day as I went from, from, you know, appointment to appointment, I'd have it on, have it in through the car, listen to that man. I'd get all that, all that movie news every day. And it kind of became, oh, I think I'll watch something, you know, there's something else that I could put on or listen to or something like that. And it became less and less of something that I had to see. Uh, it wasn't, mu it wasn't must see YouTube television, you know, for me. And then even Star Wars Jedi Council, even Jedi Council became like, uh, oh yeah, it's, oh yeah, Jedi Council's out this week. Or so, I'd hear about something happening in Star Wars and be like, oh, I wonder what Jedi Council said about it. And so then I'd, you know, I was subscribed, so I'd go back and watch it. Um, but it just did, it wasn't the must-see thing anymore. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think it's ever a good thing when, you know, even if you don't agree with everything that Collider has done, or, or the way that they run their business. Like John Campia said, you know what? This may turn out to be very good for Collider because Collider has a different way of doing things, right? It's unfortunately that, that it's unfortunate that they took something that was really good and now that's gone, you know, uh, because of the way that they managed it. And now they're going to move on to something else because that's going to be a big hole, you know, to, to that, that's gone now. Um, and unfortunately, I unfortunate. It's unfortunate that there is right now not a lot of positivity in in the reporting world. There's not a lot of there's not a, there's not a lot of there's a lot of channels doing reporting and and movie stuff and we do movie stuff and we talk about it, but there's not a lot of channels out there that are doing positive stuff where or neutral things where they don't have an agenda to either tell you something negative about everything or or be that way, you know, or just give you their spin on it, which I I think that I feel like Collider towards the end started getting to the, that they were putting their spin on it, but it wasn't, wasn't always like that. And so, um, 
you know, it, it's sad. I obviously we feel bad for anybody who lost their jobs and our hearts go out to them. Uh, but I think there's a lot of talented people on there and I feel that they'll probably land and, you know, in, in good places. So, you know, good for them. Look forward to seeing them, you know, in the future and seeing what, what they're able to do. Um, but it is definitely the end of an era. Uh, as far as as far as the YouTube community for those of us who have been around for a while and uh, and watch this stuff and so that's why I, I wanted to do this video I, I wanted to do this video about that and just say you know hey thanks uh, really more thanks to John Campia thanks to Christian Harloff thanks to a lot of those original uh, re that that original crew back then that. Uh, that, that did those those videos that got you know through AMC and then early collider stuff that really you know did that and then yeah thanks to those you know who who were still doing it but um, you know especially those those early crews they they were inspirational and uh, they, they made us want to talk about movies and uh, you know and and talk about the stuff that we love that, that we talk about you know I don't know Tiff what would you have uh, you have anything that, that you pretty much said it <laughs> I know but I it's something I know that I wanted to talk about um, you know but I didn't know if, if you know I mean I, you watched all that stuff with me so you know I didn't know if you might have something that you just want to you know that 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 you got because there was a lot of there was a lot of women who who came I liked, through. ironically her name was Tiffany yep <laughs> Tiffany Smith yeah but I loved her I loved um, who's that the girl that um, I don't remember the names as much as you do because you watched it a lot more than I did, but yeah. she um, she was a lot on Jedi Council at the very end. Um, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um, the name is at the tip of my tongue. I know, I can't think of it right now either. I can't think of it right now. I know who you're talking about, yeah. She's got the straight hair, shortish. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep, so, I mean, there was a lot of cool, which I thought was fun watching those shows because, I mean, I did agree half the time with John Campy. I didn't like his attitude sometimes. <laughs> But, um, you know, very knowledgeable, knew what he was talking about, knew good or bad, he knew what was going on. But I did like the fact that you had people like, you know, Tiffany Smith and, you know, that other girl that I was trying to think of. Mm -hmm. um, just because it's like it goes to show that there are women, you know, that just you are nerdy and knowledgeable and, you know, can talk certain guys, you know, in, in a circle just when it comes to nerd stuff. I mean, that's, yeah. that's why I'm excited about the Disney thing is just because it's like, I want to go there because I, I feel like a, like a five-year-old kid knowing that I get to stand next to the Falcon to take a picture yep. that I need, you know, that, you know, all these little things that, you know, kids get excited about and I'm going to be 40 and I'm getting excited about being able to be there and just to experience all that. Yeah. And so to have women on the show like that, that were just, you know, just as knowledgeable, if not more at times, that it was just cool to kind of have that too. Yeah. And I think that's awesome because like, because over the course of the last year or so, like we have made female friends who are, are big nerds just like us. And it wasn't I know... just having women sitting there at the table just to look pretty, just to say, hey, yep. we have women here. That's like, right. Like they actually not knew the what spokes, they were talking like about. Like the spokes model person, yeah. like just announcing stuff. Well, it Tiffany was... Smith, I thought she was pretty and she was funny yeah. and she was knowledgeable. So it's like she was the whole package and it was one of those things that I loved. Yeah. And that's why I liked her. Yeah. And I think that's great. And and, and I know that we have a lot of, of women who, who watch mm. the, the channel here and they're just as much into this stuff as mm -hmm. we are. And I think it's good for them to see somebody like you even who like, this is your thing. Like, like you've, you've told the story. Uh, maybe you can tell it now. Like when people used to tease you about liking wrestling. Yeah. You, you know, and that's the one thing where I feel that, you know, to, to quote, you know, the faith that we both have, you know, but I know that I felt that God know, knew what he was doing when he gave me boys because I wanted girls so badly because I was like, I wanted the girly girl. I wanted the dresses. I wanted the bar the Barbies, the makeup, all that stuff. But when I ended up having kids, I had two boys. And when I remarried, I had another boy. So I have three boys. And so I was sitting there thinking, Four well, to count me. Yeah. You know, it's what it feels like sometimes. But it was one of those things that I thought, man, well, I don't get to, you know, do the dresses. But every single one of my friends has girls. So I can, you know, get that out of my system. But it's like, you know what? God knew what he was doing because I love baseball. I love hockey. I love football. I love wrestling. I love all this stuff. And it's like people used to make fun of me for it. But it's like that's what me and my brother grew up with. He would steal my Barbies and I would steal his He-Man. And, you know, we were playing with our toys back in the day. And so 
it's just one of those things where I can be the girly girl. I can dress up. I can do, you know, do what I want to do. But mm -hmm. yet I get to enjoy all those other things. I get to enjoy the Star Wars and having all, you know, the boy things that, you know, I, I always felt like a tomboy anyway growing up. But it's like now that's like something that I can wear proudly as a tomboy, a, a nerd, a, you know, all these things that people would make fun of you for when you were younger that it's like, I am proud to be that now. I can sit there and play tag football, and I can also watch Star Wars and all these other, you know, nerdy things. And our boys went through a wrestling phase where everything was WWE mm -hmm. for about, what, five, six years? Oh, yeah. And, and what, what would you tell people when they'd say that, that, when they'd act like we were dragging you out to wrestling stuff? I was like, <laughs> I would tell them, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm a woman, and we're going to watch half-naked men oiled up wrestling each other. Don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. So there you go. Uh, you know, it just is what it is. Plus they just kick butt. Yeah. And, you know, so. Fun to watch. So, like I said, it is the end of an era. And I know a lot of you guys, you know, have watched those same channels that we have. And, and you guys, you know, get your news from a lot of the same places that we do. And um, But we just love to talk about it. And, and so we're inspired to talk about it by some of those people that came before us. I think the problem is there's not a lot of inspiration coming out nowadays anything positive at least yeah there's just not a lot of positive inspiration uh coming out nowadays uh and so um so i appreciate back i appreciate those days when there when there was a lot of positivity and inspiration and and it made us want to put up a camera and talk about the things that we love you know with you guys and then that has led to you guys being here you know almost eight eight thousand of you guys now and uh and we're, we're shooting for 10 and so uh but when we do live streams and you guys are in here and a lot of you guys have become like family to us and uh we're just appreciative and that's why we call you our nerd family because we're so glad for each and every one of you guys and we love having you guys as part of our life and uh, if this is your first time here that's what we're all about that's just who we are we we just we're nerds and we we wear that proudly and uh, i actually had somebody comment on one of our videos not too long ago uh, because we say we're a place for nerds and they I don't know who this person was, but I, I, they were like straight out of the eighties or something, some bully out of the eighties. It was, it reminded me of like, like a stupid, like, like a revenge of the nerds movie or something like that. Cause they were like, they literally commented, Oh, you're trying to make nerd a positive thing. Oh, that's never going to happen. You're, you're just a bunch of nerds. And Too late. I was like, did you not see what, what we call the channel? All I can think of is, a place that, for is nerds? that dude is like, nerd. <laughs> Like, um, I think you're missing the point. Yeah, yeah, we're nerds. We love it. We we love nerd culture. Yeah, so we, we what? Love... Jealous? And, and, if, and if you haven't noticed, the rest of the world is pretty much into the same stuff that we're into. So, you know, nerd culture has taken over. Lounge for a reason. That's right. Yeah, they had a problem with our name Poindexter because they were like, ah, yeah, that's a negative term, you know, because you're a nerd and whatever. And I'm like, not, not to us. Not to us. We, we look at it as a fun place to get together with our friends and talk about this stuff. So... Um, but yeah, I just wanted to take a video and 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 just talk about what that meant to us because it truly is the end of an era and it's it's a it's a time passed from something that was part of our life for a long time and uh, especially now this this new era of Star Wars and and new movies and you know, the Marvel movies and a lot of the DC movies and stuff a lot of information has come through these sh these shows on. Mm -hmm. uh, through A and E and Collider, and so uh, I'm sad to see it go. Even though at the end here, I haven't watched it religiously, like I used to. Uh, it's still sad, you know, to see. You're making your own videos that they taught you how to do. I know, and so it, you know, it's one of those things. It's like when when you have like a store or something in in your in your town or whatever, and you haven't really been there in a long time, but it's some place you used to go to. But then when you see it closed down, you go, "Oh, huh, maybe I should have visited a little bit more often or something," you know. So. You know, it'll definitely have a place in our hearts and it'll be interesting to see what Collider does from here because there's still going to be a channel and I know they've been doing a lot of these deep fake things and they're trying to go a little bit more celebrity oriented and things like that, you know. And so it'll be interesting to see like how their channel changes and what those changes are. And so, you know, we'll be watching and we'll... We'll see what that's all about. But what do you guys think? Uh, what are some of your memories of watching uh, uh, AMC Movie News and, and Jedi Council and 
Collider and, and all those things. Do you guys have positive uh, memories of that? Even if you have negative memories, let us know down in the comment section. Also, follow us on social media. All those links are in the description below. We would love to hear from you. And if you love Star Wars like we do and you love nerd things, we've got all kinds of great merchandise in our store. The links are below. Uh, you can get a hashtag I love Star Wars shirt in uh, a couple different uh, uh, Style. styles. And then also some some also some also merchandise that with those uh, logos on it. You can get uh, one of our cool Poindexter Lounge, a place for nerds, uh, shirts, and merchandise. That's all down there. And also... If you're in a position where you can, please consider giving to our Patreon. That helps us to do things like maybe upgrade our systems and maybe make it look a little cooler in here because we didn't have the benefit of coming from someplace like Collider and just like getting 100,000 subscribers right away. We're having to work at it the hard way. And so <laughs> we would love for you to be a part of this growing community that way and we would appreciate your support. And there's all kinds of cool stuff that you can get through that. We work on like putting out videos uh, just for, for them and... Uh, yeah, so become a part of that today, all right? Well, I think that's about all we got for this one. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely some things to think about. And um, I'm, I'm glad that you are on this journey with all of us. Until next time, my name is Enosh, a.k.a. Enosh Fett, along with the lovely... Tiftastic. Saying, there's no more Collider, but we're still here for you. And we will be for a long time here at the Point Dexter Lounge. Unless the whole, the whole COPPA rule shuts us down this year. We'll have to wait and see. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. If you made it this far in the video, you are awesome. Thank you guys so much for your support. Please smash that like button and, of course, subscribe. And also, hit that notifications bell so that you are aware when we put out new videos, which is like all the time. Thanks for being a part of the Poindexter Lounge, and uh, we'll see you next time.